In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. And for today's Chaplain's Report, we go to the book of Colossians. And it really does go, co go hand in hand with what we were just talking about. It coincides with the overall message of what we've been talking about today, which is that the truth matters. But it also matters in the way that we represent it. So I'm kind of presented the, the original argument, which is, the truth matters more than your feelings, but it's not as though feelings don't matter at all. And this actually is a biblical principle, and I think that it's illustrated quite well by the Apostle Paul in the book of Colossians, chapter 4, verses 5 through 6. Conduct yourselves with wisdom toward outsiders, making the most of opportunity. Let your speech always be with grace, as though seasoned with salt, so that you will know how you should respond to each person. It's important to remember here the context in which this quote is being made. Paul is talking about it in reference to the scripture. When you are sharing the gospel with someone, when you go out on a limb and you are saying to someone, this is the way that you should live, we should always remember to season our speech with salt. Now, I want you to think about that analogy and why he used salt specifically. First of all, we could do a whole lesson on salt. Jesus refers to Christians, refers to his followers as the salt of the earth, the light of the world. There's all kinds of applications, but I want to stay sort of laser-focused on what's going on here in Colossians and in the manner of, of evangelizing to another person. And this is true in any aspect of your life, whether you're specifically trying to evangelize with someone again, which is the context that's being used here, or just in your daily life. Having speech that is graceful and seasoned with salt. Now, what does it mean to be graceful? What is grace? It is unmerited favor, which would mean what? Even when people aren't nice to us, even when they persecute us, call us names, even if they don't extend the same courtesy to you, that is not an excuse to have speech that is not seasoned with salt because the, by very definition, graceful speech would be speech that is not dependent on the other person. We can't always control what other people do. We can't control what other people say. But we can absolutely control what we do and say. And that's the standard that the Bible is going to hold us to. What does salt do? If you have food that you want to be more flavorful, that you want to be more palatable, you add salt. I think that the analogy is very, very good here. That whenever we're presenting something, whether it's the gospel or an idea about politics or just interactions with people on a regular basis, we need to make a conscious effort to make our speech palatable in such a way that our interaction with other people will be as enjoyable and tension-free as possible. I do think that that is a biblical idea and it is one that I stand beside. It may surprise some people because of the line of work I'm in. And honestly, this is an area where I could use some improvement. I fall short on this on a pretty regular basis. I'm, I'm not as much of a people person as I would like to be. But it's also important to note that salt has a preserving quality. I mean, yeah, it makes food taste good. We all like salt. Salt is good. But let's not forget that it's also functional. It's not just window dressing. It has a purpose. And that purpose is to make the meat or the food that you're eating taste better, but also to preserve it, to keep it from spoiling. They used to not have refrigeration, and so... Pretty much all their meat was salty because they would rub salt into it to keep it from ruining. 
and that's the way that our speech needs to be. That when we're presenting a message, that there is a equality that this grace that we're adding to our speech, it preserves it in the mind of the people we're imparting it to. It makes it last longer. It makes an impact on others. To where that speech is better for them, and it is better for longer. So we not only make it palatable, we make it memorable. We try to influence and impact other people because that's the way Jesus Christ was. Because that's the one we're supposed to be following, isn't it? Think about the dialogues of Jesus. Do you think any of the people that he ran into forgot him? Granted, there were a lot of people that didn't like him. You had the Romans and the Pharisees. I mean, for goodness sake, they crucified him. But they didn't forget him. And so, even though, just like Jesus, there are going to be people that even though we have our... Sometimes we'll do a really good job and, and do like Christ and season our our speech with salt and grace. It's not going to please everybody. There's going to be people that get really mad at us, even when we do that. But the point is, at that point, it's on them. It's no longer our fault. We did everything that we could. And we made an effort to consider their feelings. We made an effort to consider where they were coming from, to try to have some empathy for them. If we do that and they still don't accept it, then they're not going to. But at that point, it's their pro it's something that is on them, not us. Just like it was with Jesus Christ. He loved everybody. He showed compassion to everybody. Sometimes he would rhetorically kick somebody in the britches because they needed it. But even that was done out of love. And even that was try he tried to do it in such a way that people would understand what he was trying to do, that he was trying to tell them the kingdom is coming, there is a better way to live, and you have to let go of whatever it is that is keeping you from having a right relationship with God. Sometimes it worked, a lot of times it didn't. And that's going to be true for us as well. But as long as we are seasoning our speech with salt, then there are going to be people that desire it more. And that brings us to our final point on this. What happens when you use too much salt? Ruins it, doesn't it? When you use too much salt... Salt is all you can taste. If you were to pour a whole sh shaker of salt onto a hamburger or french fries, it ruins it. You have no desire to eat that anymore because it is so salty you can't even taste the food underneath it. And I think that that is the problem that a lot of people run into in our secular world. They are so concerned. And it's good to be concerned about other people's feelings. That's a, a positive thing. But they are so concerned with another person's feelings that they just dump the salt on with no thought about whether or not they can actually taste what's underneath it. They ignore truth altogether just to pour as much salt on it as possible so that they can never be accused of not seasoning their speech with salt. I know that they're not coming at it, a lot of them, from a biblical perspective, but if you think about it, that's what's really going on. They dump so much salt on it that you can't taste the truth underneath it. They're so concerned about offending somebody, whether it's somebody that's homosexual or transgender, or it's just something that a person does not want to hear. You know, the participation trophy generation. That they are so concerned with the person's feelings that they ignore the truth that is underneath there. And that's another thing we can't do. I don't think that handing somebody just plain food without any salt, in other words, we hand people the gospel without any seasoning, without any thought about how they might accept it, that's not good because we're only doing half our job there. We are commanded to present the gospel in such a way that it is to be palatable to them. But we also can't ruin it with salt either. We can't just dump a ton of salt on there to where they don't even know what they're really getting. And that's a problem with Christianity right now, too. There are a lot of churches out there that the meal that they are feeding people has so much salt, they don't even know what they're eating. So they'll walk out of church that they've been going to two, three years, and they can't quote a single Bible verse because they have sacrificed the truth of God for making it as palatable as humanly possible. And that's just as bad as having no salt at all. Truth without empathy is brutality. But empathy without truth is worthless. And so it's important for us to condition our speech, to have the right amount of salt, to where we are doing our biblically commanded duty like Paul gives us in Colossians, 
to where we're presenting the word in a way that they can understand it and grow closer to God through their interactions with us. Because ultimately, shouldn't that be the goal of every interaction we have in our life? Stay the course, friends. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.